Hello, I'm Mike Levin from Mike Levin SEO. And this is the Gropey project, and I'm up to a, another interesting step. It seems every step is super interesting to me. I hope it is to you. Global variables, bad. Global variables, necessary. Namespaces, let's use more of those. So, let's create a new namespace. This is actually quite interesting because namespaces get created by new file names. And things you put in those new file names become namespace. So if we want to create a new namespace that works as an organized place to keep what we're tempted to use as global variables, then this is how you do it. And by the way, I need a logic split now between how these all rows are coming into the picture. Right now, it's just typed in, hardwired into the code. That can't last. It has to be loaded either from an external file or from Google Spreadsheets. So there's a split in behavior coming up. And I need something to base that if statement split. Um, or there's other ways to do a split, like plugging values into dictionaries. Again, with the dictionaries. Uh, in Python, dictionaries can take even the place of switch, the switch statement in other languages. But I'll get to that later. Shifto. One more line. Import arbitrary name. It's got to be short, it's got to be stand, it's got to stand for these global configuration things. So the choices between the concept global and the concept configuration, you're going to see it all throughout the program later on as we use more of these things. So I can either do import CFG and then it would be CFG dot everywhere or I could do import glob and it would be glob dot everywhere. Is this configuration stuff or is this global stuff? Well, it's going to be changing as we go. Uh, glob makes more sense. So we're just going to import glob and before I save it, I do tab, oops, I hit escape, I do tab E, colon tab E, blob dot ui. And now I'll set a variable name to, uh, and it's going to be a constant in this case, so I for insert mode, and I'm going to call it, mm, it has to stand for where the table's coming from. The table might be loaded out of Google Spreadsheets, or out of a file. So, oh, it's, it's a table source, but it's more than just one table. It's going to be, well, table source to database source, DB source. DB source sort of gets more to the fact because it's going to completely replace the .db file that we're currently using. So every time you look at DB source, it makes total sense. And in this case, we'll set DB source set to local. Now we have something to base a logic switch on. I can save that. And then I can GT. And now I can import glob. And now we just want to um, run it and see if we get the output again. Yay, it didn't choke, so what we did is correct. We're importing a namespace. Now I think I'm going to clean up all that stuff down there on the output so we don't have to keep looking at it. This is one that we can edit out. And uh, we know these work. We can go back to them later. I, I literally just want, well, we can't delete the only thing in it in a loop, though. i got to keep that one. Uh, yeah, okay. 
And when is a good time to test? Now is a good time to test. It's good to go in these small little steps so that you um, never introduce bugs, or if you do, you catch a bug as quick as you introduce it. There's still a little too much to look at, so GG to jump to top, prints, and get rid of it. We'll comment that one out. That one out. And then the search is going up. And if you want to comment one out that's in a loop, all you got to do is put the word, oops, put the word pass in. That hold serves as a nice placeholder. I should have gotten rid of almost all the program output. Yep, all of it's gone. Okay, now da, 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 da. we need to put in, well, first we need to check that we have that value now that was db source in import blob. So now we go inside the scope of main and we can. Uh, print blob.db source. See what a namespace is? The namespace is just the file name of the file you just imported. You don't have to put py at the end of it when you do an import. And so now we should see the variable name. Up, oh, shell return one, module object has no attribute db source. Is that true? GT. Blob.py. DB. S O U R C E. Equals local. Looks correct to me. Maybe it was never written. That's all it was. I didn't save. Remember to save, boys and girls. So already this is a great tutorial because I just introduced the concept of sort of global variables, but it's namespace, so it's, a, it's good. You know, it's all contained. There's no memory leakage going on around here. But now what I can do, and this is why I need it, uh, we are only going to do this. All rows is going to have one meaning if one thing another meaning if another thing. So we are going to introduce that, that fourth data split here. So um, first we need to uh, create all rows at the global, not global, but at the main scope level. So we'll say all rows, and we'll just set it equal to, uh, to empty, just so that it's there. Now, if glob dot db source equal equal local because remember when you're doing comparison operators it's equal equal when you're doing assignment it's single equal and you always have to put the colon after an if statement and um, if that's the case then All this all rows stuff happens this way. And since that always evaluates to true, then it's uh, it's going to run without an error, which we can check here, because when is a good time to test your code? Now is a good time to test the code. No errors, no output, but no errors. Um, so we're going to do an, an else, an elif, and then an else, so that we have multiple ways we can handle this. Let's tighten that up a bit. Okay. 
And remember, indents are your code blocks in Python, so we have to do it at exactly the same level of indent as your if. So we'll say elif, because else statements are very abbreviated in Python. Blob.db source equals equals gdocs colon. Now I'm just going to put a different data set. I'm going to do the exact same uh, logic in there. It won't last very long, but I, I actually need to have something in there to test it. And I'll just change the, uh, the data a little. Row 2, spam 2, so we know what we're looking at. And uh, so we have an if, an elif, and then we should have an else because you never want to leave these, these bug possibilities there. So it's going to be the exact same thing as before, except uh, now I'm going to put uh, below 3 and spam 3. So again, we know what we're looking at. We have just forked behavior fairly dramatically, but only how this object that you iterate through, which is not necessarily in the server's memory, just reference to a much larger data store somewhere, and cursors on how to walk through it are all that's really in the server's memory, so memory won't uh, blow up on you. Uh, let's show something as we step through the, uh, I guess, the, the uh, not the function names. This is all just to get the functions. It's this little one down here that's uh, showing the contents of the uh, of the rows. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all right. And it's the normal output. Um, but we do have a place where we can uh, change our, our input as to where this data is going to be uh, fetched from. So let's tab E, glob. .py, and you'll be seeing this file uh, a lot later on uh, because there's going to be a lot of things that go in here. Uh, the new source uh, gdocs. That should reduce the twos. I need to uh, gt. There you have it, spam2, hello2. Press any key to continue, gt, and then uh, delete word, save, gt, run it again, and there is our spam3 and the hello3. There you have it. Um, successful demo. I introduced the concept of uh, namespaces achieved by new files that you create. The namespaces automatically get the file name and when you import it you don't have to refer to the, uh, the extension to import it. So you import glob and then everything that's in there gets becomes glob dot and whatever its name is in here. Another wonderful attribute of Python. And then I uh, make a simple logic uh, switch here with uh, the first if statement using that global namespace. And the second one is an elif. So you get to see the uh, else if structure in Python. And then uh, finally the else for fallover. So you get to see good defensive coding so that it never can uh, encounter an untrapped condition. Well, thanks for joining me, and on the next video, maybe I'll start to uh, actually connect this to Google Spreadsheets as an alternative data source. And uh, please subscribe, and talk to you soon.